Hey, what's up guys? Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to maximize hamstring growth. This isn't just based on my opinion. We're gonna use this research article, which studied the muscular adaptations from training programs that included the Nordic hamstring curl versus the stiff leg deadlift. One major critique about looking at research articles is that it's often on untrained subjects. So for example, the video that I recently made about maximizing muscle hypertrophy was really good for overall takeaways about maximizing muscle hypertrophy, but it didn't tell us a lot about specific elements in elite or well-trained athletes training programs. By contrast, the article that we're looking at today is actually gonna tell us about how elite rugby players responded to a program that had stiff leg deadlifts versus Nordic hamstring curls. So the way that this study worked was that a team of Premier League rugby players who were very well-trained elite athletes were divided into two groups. They completed their normal training program, but one group incorporated the Nordic hamstring curl into that training program. The opposite incorporated stiff leg deadlifts. And then the research study measured different muscular adaptations over five weeks of training with those two different variables. Now, one of the downsides of having elite athletes is that the magnitude of change isn't gonna be very high because these athletes are very well trained already, so they're not gonna experience newbie gains like you might see in a different study of untrained individuals. But this study did take some advanced measurements with hypertrophy and fascicle length, and that can actually give us some insight into how elite athletes' hamstrings adapt to different training variables. So I do wanna point out that these differences were not statistically significant, although differences were shown, but we're still gonna make some inferences based on the measures that they provided. So overall, the Nordic hamstring curl exercise was superior for both hypertrophy and increases in fascicle length. The interesting thing about fascicle length is it actually has a relation to risk of hamstring strain. And other research has actually shown a 50% reduction in injury risk from incorporating Nordic hamstring curls into an exercise program. So this study is giving us a little bit of a lens into the muscular adaptations that are specifically associated with that and how that looks in elite athletes. Importantly, the way that this was programmed, the Nordic hamstring curl was a true eccentric overload exercise, meaning that these athletes actually hit a peak force output, and as they leaned forward, they actually had a point of failure, so the eccentric component of the Nordic hamstring curl was more intense than that of the stiff-legged deadlift in this intervention. That's likely what led to more hypertrophy from the intervention of Nordic hamstring curls. By contrast, the stiff leg deadlift group actually outperformed the Nordic hamstring curls on measures of counter movement, jump height, and concentric strength. The stiff leg deadlift exercise is performed with a concentric and eccentric component that is equally loaded, meaning that they weren't letting go of weight or adding more weight to the eccentric part of the exercise. So while you can perform this with control and what's considered eccentric accentuation, it wasn't eccentrically overloaded. The fact that they loaded the concentric portion of the repetition and that the overall training load was probably a little bit less taxing from the stiff leg deadlift intervention than a bunch of really intense eccentrics on the Nordic hamstring curl, that's probably why we saw a greater counter movement jump height and concentric strength improvement from the stiff leg deadlift group. So what are the overall takeaways from this research study? Well, if you're a well-trained athlete, then you're going to get specific adaptations to each of these exercises, and it actually may be beneficial to combine both. We may need to consider times throughout the year where we combine these two interventions, and times where we focus on one or the other based on the specific adaptations that we're looking for. If your goal is in the short term to increase jump height and concentric strength, we probably wanna use some hamstring exercises that have a concentric component, if your goal is just to maximize muscle hypertrophy and get really beefy hamstrings, whether that be to prevent hamstring strains or just for aesthetic purposes, then we can probably crush some eccentrics with something like a Nordic hamstring curl or another hamstring curl variation that is eccentrically overloaded. For the specific outcome of increasing fascicle length to reduce hamstring strain risk and specifically in the biceps femoris, we probably wanna use a hamstring exercise that involves hip extension so for example, when we see peak forces in the Nordic hamstring curl exercise, we have slight knee flexion and full hip extension. And this might be a little bit more joint angle specific to the demands of running. I think overall this was an interesting study to review because of the elite athletes that were in this study. And hopefully you guys learned something and got some helpful takeaways to incorporate into your own training. If you want to learn more, you can head to themovementsystem.com. I actually have a blog there on hamstring training for sprinters. 
And you can follow along on Instagram at The Movement System. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.